Alex Reshnis as art director. I'm going to teach you how to make a custom logo in Illustrator. Before I start designing, I like to go into Pinterest and start saving images, make, create a mood board of sorts. I seem to gravitate towards softer colors, blushes, creams, maybe some greens as accent colors. And I seem to have saved a lot of things that had serif type bases. Before I get started working, I like to set up my workspace to make sure everything's at my disposal. So to set up my window, I'm going to go to the top menu, Window, Workspace, and then click the Essentials panel. The Essentials panel has most of the tools that we'll need and we'll probably add a few more. On your screen, you should see the toolbar on your left, Color, Swatches, Character, Paragraph, Transform, Align, and Pathfinder and stroke and transparency. Those are the key ones, you can add others, there might be others that pop up, you can leave them. So let's get started on the logo. I'm gonna use my first and last name, but this is a personal choice. So the best way to start your design is using the type tool. You can find that in the toolbar on your left, and it's pretty simple, it's just the letter T. So you can click that, and then click onto your canvas. And once you click, just type your name. Don't worry about grammar or anything yet, we can fix anything later. So it types pretty small by default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it bigger. I can either do that in the character palette on the right and make it a uniform size. We'll call it 48. And that is a good size to see. So what I like to do is I like to start with like four at a time. And that way I can see the differences and compare what I'm liking and what I'm not. The way to duplicate is to click onto the name that you just wrote hold down Option on your keyboard, and you'll see if you're mousing over your name that two little arrows appear instead of just the regular one. And then you click and drag. I start by clicking onto my name, and I want to change the typefaces. I noticed in my inspiration board that I was really into the serif typefaces, and so I'm going to look through my library and see what I have there. Once you have a few typefaces selected, the easiest thing to do is start playing around with the arrangement and the spacing of the letters. With this first logo, I'm going to play around with the spacing between the letters. That's called kerning. So once you select your name, you can come over to the character palette and press this button here and the arrows to mouse over and you can see it's slowly changing how far apart the letters are. After I did the kerning, I want to see how this looks with different casing. And like I said, when you started, there's no need to worry about the grammatical stuff because we're going to come back and change it anyway. So this one, I'm going to be all caps. So I can either do that here in the character palette with this 2T icon. You click it and it automatically goes to all caps. So after I see it in all caps, I like that. I might come back to it, but I want to see how it looks in a different casing. What I can do is come up to the top menu, to the type menu, and go to change case, and then title case. Title case is just when the first letter of each word is capital. And I like that, but it looks a little bit too normal. So I'm gonna go back to all caps. With this one, I'm gonna leave it lowercase, but I don't wanna leave it all in one line like I did the other. I'm just gonna send it to the next line by clicking in between the words and pressing enter. But as you can see, like when you press enter, there's a little bit too much space between the words and they're not relating to each other. So what I can do with that is change the letting. Letting is the space between lines. And again, it's a very easy thing to do over in your character palette. So above the kerning tool that we used before is the letting. And same thing, you just can decrease by pressing the bottom arrow until it kind of is where you like it. And that looks good for now. And for this last one, I think I'm going to leave it as is. I want to work on this second one. So I want this logo to be editable. I want it to be like an object instead of type. So I'm going to go to the type menu on the top and click create outlines. So you can see when I did that, I can no longer type but instead I can now pull points on the edge and make new shapes. So here I just want to get rid of the top of the eye, but notice when you click it, you can't 
just select that circle. So what we want to do is divide those two shapes into their own shapes. And I can do that by going to the Pathfinder tool on the right side. And you'll see that there's these different icons. There's one for Unite, Minus Front, Intersect, Exclude, Divide, and a few others. But the one we're really looking for today is Divide. So and when I click that, it clicks. You don't see anything happen. But if you click off of it and then mouse back over the dot of the eye, notice that you can click it now. So once I can click it, I'm just going to press delete. Easy peasy. I wanted to delete the dot of the eye because the Y kind of serves as that dot when you're looking at them together. But now that I'm looking at it, I think it's just a little bit too far over to the right to make it work together. So I want to move it a little bit closer. So for this one, since I don't want to select the whole word and I just want to select one letter, and even past the letter, I want to select just some points. I can use the direct selection tool, the white arrow next to the black arrow. When I'm using that, you can see I can mouse over to these points and I will just be selecting one. That's a filled in blue circle. So then I don't just want that one point, I want a few. So to select multiple at once, I can click shift on my keyboard, hold it, and then click around on the points that are needed which are basically just the points that are on that swash of the Y. So once I have the ones I need selected, I can just gently pull the Y over, and you can see the guides on the side keep you, so you can see what it looks like once it's moved. I wanna keep that pretty in line so that there's no point left behind and it doesn't look all wonky. So once I move it over, I'm gonna drop it where the dot of the eye would have been. And there you go. So the next thing I wanna do is join the two Fs here. When you're looking at it, you can see the space between the two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and select these two points with the same direct selection tool. And I'm going to pull that over to the other crossbar of the F. And so that seems simple enough. Now they're joined. But to make sure that that's a smooth line across to the other F, I'm going to select both of those letters with the direct selection tool, and then come back over to the Pathfinder tool and click Unite, so that they're all the same shape. I like this the way it is, but I wanna try seeing how it looks in different formats, maybe using it as a cutout. So I'm gonna duplicate that logo so that I have two. I'm going to draw a shape over the logo. you'll notice that it goes in front of the logo and then you're not able to see what's behind it. You can't see the logo that you made anymore. I just wanna send this to the back of the canvas so that I can see the logo first and I can see what I wanna cut out. So to do that, make sure that that square is selected and I can go to Object in my top menu, then Arrange and Send to Back. And so now I'm looking at it as the logo on top of the square. And it seems like it's in good placement, but what I could do is make sure it's aligned by using the Align palette in the right side of my screen. If I want to align it to the left side, then I will look at the shapes that are next to a left line. But for this one, I just wanna make sure that it's centered. So I can click the center and then center this way. So then I want to select the word and the shape and I'm gonna go back to my Pathfinder tool. And since this one I want it to be subtracted from the shape, I'm going to use the minus front layer. So the front layer, which is my logo, will be subtracted from the back layer, which is the square. And I click it and there it is, easy. Okay, so these two both look good and I think they're solid options. I'm going to use the one that was just plain without the square. I'm gonna duplicate it again so that I still have that one. And then I'm going to kind of give it a wave, make it cool. And so to do that, I select the word, I go to object, and then envelope distort. And I can click make with warp. And so this little window comes up and it gives you a lot of fun options. And so I encourage you to kind of look through them and see, see what works. 
think I'll just go with the flag on this one. See, since the bend is up to 50%, that's too much. It makes too much of an impact. I want it to kind of just be subtle, so I bring the slider on the bend down to, let's call it 10%. All right, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna click OK, and then I have a fun wavy logo. So I wanna use this one, I wanna make sure it's ready to go and edited in the proper way. So look when you click on it, you can see this the wave pattern again, but I can't click into it. So what I wanna do is I wanna expand that container and make sure that it's an object again. So I can come back to that envelope to store it by going to the top menu, and then object, envelope to store it, and then expand, and see now it's just a normal shape. So from there, I wanna give it some color. Thinking about where I wanna use the logo, I think I'm gonna make the logo green. I think it'll stand out more instead of blending in with the creams and blushes. I can come to the color palette on the right side of my screen and just select a color as I go. I can click around. Your, your eyedropper will kind of guide you in what you wanna do. Okay, so here's the final product. I really like it. I wanna get it ready to go for other programs and other places that I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna open up a new tab. So I could do that by going to File and then New or pressing Command N on my keyboard. New. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it from this palette onto there. And it looks a little small, so I'm just gonna grab it and then make it bigger. To make sure that it doesn't get warped, you wanna make sure that you're bringing them up at the same rate. You can hold Option and Shift on your keyboard and then click the corner arrow and you're gonna raise it proportionately. And I'm gonna save it out. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save. I'm gonna save it as an EPS, which is a vector file. So I have that menu open. I can click Format on the bottom here and click Illustrator, EPS. The only thing is you can't put an EPS file on the internet. So if you're gonna use this logo for anything on the web or on social, you're gonna wanna save it out as a PNG. So to do that, I can just come to my top menu, File, Export, and then PNG. You can export it with a transparent background, with white backgrounds. Transparent's just the easiest for if you're gonna use it on your website. And click OK, and that's it. That's my logo. I hope this gave you an idea of what you want to do with yours, and we can't wait to see them. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, feel free to email us at membership at collegefashionista.com. Thanks for watching.